This plant is called dock or broadleaf dock or sometimes bitter dock. And uh, some, some different ways you can identify it. It's got a kind of a waxy leaf compared to other types of dock. Um, the, the underside doesn't look much different than the, the top. Um, notice that the leaf has a red in it. See that? Other type of one last good way to identify it is the color of the tap root. It's like, and the way you can use these the, the leaves, um, if you eat them raw, they're pretty probably they wouldn't want to do that. But if you cook them for about three or four minutes, it starts to leach out some bitter. If you cook it for six or seven or eight minutes, it's, it starts to turn kind of mushy. So there's a, a delicate balance there. Uh, so if you were to cook these, you would blanch it in cold water to stop the cooking. Uh, see if I got enough of the root here. We also saute it. As a matter of fact, anybody that's just going to join everybody for lunch, we have some uh, curly dock stuffed bread that we made yesterday. We will share with everybody. So you can see the, the very yellow tap root. Oh, yeah. Uh -huh. so that's an easy way to make sure that you've, you've got the right thing. Or the other one. What's that? The other type of dock. Um, <laughs> there's curly dock, which is a bit a bit narrower in the leaves, and the, the margin of the leaves are very curly. Is there any of it that's poisonous, or is it all okay? Uh, so, the, so the better, you, you mean about this particular species? Yeah. Mm -hmm. No, that, that, you know, the species is edible. Um, the leaves are edible. Um, yeah, so there's, there's a curly dock. Which has narrower leaves and curly margins, especially near the, the base of the leaf. And then there's also burdock. <coughs> might have heard that before. Mm -hmm. uh, which has a more uh, doesn't have a, the the shininess of the or the glossiness of this one, and it has a kind of a white powder or white bloom on the underside. Um, I, I didn't see that in the park anywhere, so uh, I can't necessarily point that out, but. And I'll pass this around. You can look at the leaves look for some red ones. No. No. If you're if you're not sure if it's really if it's really a uh, bitter dock, then that's a good way to identify it. But We'll see, we'll see plenty more of it today. So. Yeah, so the, I think everybody's seen dandelion before. Um, you've got the, the very sort of indented tooth leaves. And, uh, yeah, so it's a good spring edible. I'd like to see these, uh, these little fiddlehead ferns up here. These are not an edible species right here. Um, this, there's really only one species of fern that people eat, and that's the ostrich fern. And um, you can recognize those fiddle heads because they have kind of brown paper. So when they're in that stage right there, um, they'll be covered in kind of brown papery thing that you can rub off. Um, they're pretty rare, so we're... Are they ostrich fiddleheads or the bracken? So ostrich fiddleheads are the ones that people mainly eat. Uh, bracken? That, I don't think that's bracken either, but... Um, but it's not, it's not ostrich? Yeah. No. So the ostrich fern fiddleheads have a kind of brown paper at that stage that you can rub off. These have more kind of a hairy, uh, kind of a fuzz on them. Okay. So they're definitely not the, the species that people eat. Oh, that's too bad. <laughs> yeah, it was hard. <laughs> Uh, this is a, a tulip tree, and uh, so one characteristic of tulip trees is, is this kind of brownish bark that has um, kind of long, uh, you see the kind of diamond pattern in the bark, and um, it's kind of tall to see the leaves right here. We'll probably find some shorter ones, but the leaves also uh, kind of have a characteristic uh, four lobe pattern. Um, and a little later, they're going to produce flowers that look kind of like tulips. Um, and they'll fall to the ground. They're kind of a yellowish, orangish, greenish flower. Uh, you can suck out the nectar if you, if you beat the, the ants.
Um, <laughs> but uh, the uh, two of the different types of morels that people are looking for this time of year, the black morel and the tulip morel, uh, typically are found within the 10, the 10 meter or 10 foot radius of this type of tree. Um, I've been out in the woods for, for several days and last week and I haven't seen anything, so we're not likely to, to see morel today. Size. And um, the mushrooms are very good at, at uh, helping the trees uptake water and minerals because mushrooms can have you know these very thin uh, threads of mycelium. They have a large surface area. So a lot of mushrooms are mycorrhizal with trees. If for a particular type of mushroom, if you're looking for, you know, kind of the woods, you want to look for oak trees. If you're, if you're looking for morels, you want to find tulip trees or ash trees or elm trees. Apple trees too, right? Apple trees. So, uh, you can see that four lobes there, so they're, they're very distinctive leaves. Um, so if we were having a decent morel season, to go out in the woods and look at these types of trees and look around in the base of them uh, and you might start finding them find more So this is the tulip tree leaf, huh? Mm -hmm. yeah. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> A little of focus, but there you go. <laughs> The foolproof way to test absolutely positively, unless you don't have any any uh, smelling sense at all, cut it, crush it in your hand, and stick it under your nose. It's an onion. If it doesn't smell like an onion, you don't have ramp. You got something else. <laughs> okay, there's all kinds of things that look sort of like that. Unfortunately, there's something called small feelable. It's when it's very young, it looks like that, and it is. But it wraps. When it gets a little bit bigger, you'll see that the, the leaves on feelable are pleated, and these are not. Okay? You can use the entire, this time of year, you can use the entire thing um, when they're small like this. You, oh, the leaves are wonderful. Yeah. Okay. They're very strong. It's onion. You can eat them raw when they're when they're really young. You can eat them raw judiciously in a salad because otherwise they will overpower them really quickly. You can take the bowl. However, realize that when you just got you just find a few of them. If you took the bowl, that's it. You just killed the plant. If you cut off the green leaves. Yeah, the harmed anything. That's the bulb is still there. It's going to come. The leaves will come back up again. And you can find the bulb at any time during the year because after the flower spike goes up, and that stays by saying, "Hey, here I am." If you dig down, you can, you can come up with the bulb. Shannon has a complete one there. Uh, it can with the bulb and everything, and the bulbs are just fabulous as are the leaves. Where? So they like it really moist. They like it generally, characteristically really moist. And if you're looking, you just go. I can pull the whole thing up. Oh, terrific. But normally, they're hanging on for dear life. Okay, and you've got to have a tool to get them up. Or just cut it off cut at ground the level and use, and use the leaves. Um, we have, if anybody is staying and sharing things, we have a guacamole ramp. We have ramp pasta. Ramp pasta. Oh, great. <laughs>
or um, even if in, you know, go up to that area and you find, you know, a scattering of them, um, it's a more responsible practice to just pick off one leaf because the each branch plant has two or three leaves. If you pick off just one leaf, then you give the, the plant a chance to, you know, keep collecting sunlight and going to flower. And if you dig up the bulb, that that plant's gone forever. Um, if you're collecting in a, in an area that's covered with ramps, then picking up bulbs is not going to be a big deal because there's seeds in the ground and and they'll regenerate. Um, but I wouldn't recommend picking up that one plant right there because you know, ten years from now it might spread. <laughs> So, we have a dryad saddle here. Uh, this is a mushroom that comes up in the spring, um, usually April and May. Um, I guess it got its name because somebody imagined little fairies or dryads sitting on it. Sitting on it. It's really cute. Uh, it's also sometimes called a pheasant back because of the special yeah. pattern on the top. Oh, I, I know and, oh, I, I know right. Okay. 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 So the, the general category of this mushroom is polypore. Uh, polypores are, are mushrooms that often grow in wood. Um, they often have a kind of a shell shape. And underneath, they don't have gills. They have little, little holes in them. And so the spores are dispersed from these, these little holes. Uh, this is an edible polypore. And this might be a decent stage for eating. It feels fairly soft. If you can, I can tell if, it is. if you can pinch your thumbnail through it very easily. The general rule of thumb with these things is, you take a knife, not cutting, but scraping. If these pores come off, just as easy as scraping jelly off toast, mm -hmm. then it's fine. But notice the pores are giving resistance here. Yeah. Maybe the very edge here is going to be okay, but for the most part, this is a little bit too mature here. Too you can you can scrape off. See, some of the pores do scrape all right, so this portion here is probably okay. The rest of it, this can be used for stock, the inside. Mm -hmm. But if you try eating it, it's going to be like it's, it tastes fine, but it's going to be like fine tasting shoe leather. Yeah. You are never going to, you're going to be chewing it for a half an hour. So kind of like shiitake stems, like it's, it's not poisonous, but it's not edible, you throw it in stock. Exactly so. You can, you can throw it in stock. This is absolutely wonderful to use once you take off the pores, because the pores are tasteless, all they do is absorb oil. Uh, you can, uh, generally what I like to do is saute them in olive oil, maybe put a little bit of soy sauce in there also. I like to get them pretty well done, pretty crisp. And at that point, you do almost anything you want with them. You can put them into a, into a tomato sauce and get a dryad saddle sauce. You can sprinkle them on top of pizza. You can put them in a sandwich in lieu of crispy bacon. All kinds of uses for this. It is very, very strong flavored mushroom. It's sort no. of a cross between bacon and watermelon. And it smells, it smells sort of like watermelon, watermelon rind. And it smells sort of like water, watermelon rind. If you pass these around and take a look. Yeah. Yeah, but Generally hardwood, and always, always growing on wood. You never find it growing out of the ground. Are there any, um, like, poisonous ones that look like it? Very few. Always looks like the back of a, a turkey or something like that. Okay? And they're always shaped like this. They always have the pores. The smaller the pores, generally, the younger it is. Once you've got great big diamond shaped pores, that's going to be gone by already. Usually, not bigger than this, 
you can find them this big. Okay, they're wonderful to look at. But if you see those, you don't have to test them. Those are those are way too old. Okay, but sometimes you find them over only the size of a human ear. In which case, the whole thing is wonderful and tender. You can just generally you can just pass a knife through it easy. That's fine. Cool. Okay, these are a wonderful early season edible. So, uh, so um, are they too old now? <coughs> well, I mean, are we going to see more? Pretty stuff easy. Or? We certainly could see more of them, but they so, always will grow like this, generally on dead wood. Is there one similar that is not edible that would be poisonous? Yeah, that's really cool. Not at this time of year. Not that's going to have storms like that. Yeah. Not that's going to have that pattern on the back. No. That outside is very uh, yeah. distinctive. It is. I can see actually yeah, very identifying very that. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Very is there like a particular tree you just thought that it was fallen and thought to check it out or is it like I don't know who found it. No, not a particular tree, but mm -hmm. what kind of tree is this? Yeah, it's rubbery. Not find it's quite a tree. Yeah, it's it's a Wonderful. The fruit later in the season are bright red things. Do we eat it? Oh yeah. No, oh, wow. no, not the ice berry. Not the berry. The fruit. The berry. Wow, that's got a particular nice smell. Uh huh. But they and the berries are blended. Um, the closest thing the berries are to all spice. How interesting. Very nice spice berry. Mm -hmm. yeah. When do the berries? Fall. In the fall. So in the fall. And just because you find a spice berry bush doesn't mean you're going to find berries in the fall. This is males and females. Yes, males and females. And sometimes they produce and sometimes they don't. Spice berry bush. That's my hickory nut tree. It's a spice berry. Yeah, though. In the fall, it produces berries. It uses like all spice. But right now, it smells leaves. Could you maybe dry up the leaves and use them for something? I think tea? I think people do use the, the leaves for some like tea, but I don't feel them. Do they grow tall? Yeah, they get tall later. What do you say? You don't like them? No. Chives, huh? So they look a lot like chives, right? Yeah. Is that... They're related to chives. They're in family. I might be able to get to a, a bulb. Are these native or? Uh, I think they're not. Uh, so this is field garlic. And as you can see, it looks a lot like chives that you buy in the grocery store. And you can use them like chives so you can. Oh, you can just break it off? Yeah, you can uh, just snip these as a seasoning. Um, usually, the I think the, the smaller leaves. Are are uh, here to to eat. Um, if you just try eating one one whole leaf, you might find it kind of fibrous. But if you cut it up into small small pieces, it's a great seasoning. And if you find some with slightly thicker tubes like this, you can try getting to the, the bulbs. This is field garlic. Field garlic, okay. Those in our backyard? I thought we had onion grass in our backyard. Is it the same thing? Why are those different things? This is another invasive species, um, and it's you can find it a lot in a lot of places. Um, Purple plums. Yeah. So once you get to the, the base of this, you can see there's this a lot of little bulbs here. Um, and, you know, so they're, they're obviously not nearly as big as the ramp bulbs, so they're a little bit harder to use. Um, if you can find if you can find leaves that are even thicker than this, um, maybe twice as thick as this, then the, the bulbs start getting, you know, about as big as scallion bulbs. Uh -huh. um, so, you know, if it's uh, if the ground is moist and you feel like digging, then these are a lot easier to, easier to find than ramps.
Um, yeah, so. Cool. How can you differentiate them from a lot of grass? It looks just like any other grass. Uh, they're a lot. Well, I guess I've never tried eating from that one. They're a lot longer, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> the leaves are tubes, so it's not a blade. It's, uh, oh. it's a tubular one. Yeah. 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 Shana, what was the name again? Field garlic. Field garlic. You can use the leaf Yeah, so if you just chew on it, you'd probably be chewing out. But this is turn of a leaf. You got this whitish, much more whitish color, and uh, the the leaves of this are not usually eaten, but the root is eaten instead. No, it's not. Are you saying actually? Huh? You saying it's not it's something similar looking, but it's not the ball. So, mm -hmm. the the burdock is a, a biennial plant. It's a two-year plant. Um, in the first year, the burdock just stays close to the ground in the basal rosette pattern. In the second year, it'll send up a, a flower stalk and, uh, and start producing those little burrs that stick to your clothing or gets its name. Um, if you find that second year plant and you see the, the flower stalk, you know, maybe a foot or two high, you could try cutting our stalk and peeling it and, and the, uh, the flesh inside is kind of has a taste like artichoke. And the the root, if you can get to it, also has the same kind of flavor as the stem. Um, murdoch. Oh, murdoch or burr. Burr, which is not what we saw earlier. That was the uh, Paul Kelp. I think it's different, but it's just a different type. So I got part of the root here. U R R. Okay. And yeah. It's a, it's a fairly fibrous taproot, um, but what you could do is scrub this clean, and if it's, you know, you can just scrub it with some steel wool to get all the dirt off, and then slice it very thin across the, the grain, and then cook it for about 15 or 20 minutes on um, boiling water or steam. Um, you could throw it into a, a rice pot, a rice cooker. Um, it takes, you know, 15 to 20 minutes to, to, to soften it enough to be, to be tender. Um, if you... At certain times of the year, or maybe at, at the <coughs> certain times in the second year plant, the um, the stem gets very woody. So if you pick up a root and it looks like wood, uh, any amount of cooking is not going to help you. <laughs> <laughs> so this is burdock. So the leaves there. Uh, and after blanching it, you. Um, dry it off, and then do like egg and breadcrumbs, and then you go from the egg into the breadcrumbs, yeah. and then you fry it. So you eat like the stems. Basically. Eat the stems. Yeah, so you're eating it's kind of like celery. This part? This, yeah, you don't want to eat the leaves. But you, you just eat this. But imagine this section by Mother's Day being about yeah. that big. Oh, okay. And that's the section. It looks like take. a compact cluster. Yeah, it looks stem. like celery okay. when you cut it. Cool, but also the roots can be used. The, yeah, the roots, the Japanese use like the roots. Okay. For gobo, like uh -huh. the orange thing that's in like uh, oh. futamaki, mm. or if you get a vegetable roll, and you have that little round orange thing that looks yeah. like carrot, that's uh -huh. gobo. Huh. But they just use the root, yeah. the root will be like about this long. Uh -huh. So it turns a color? Yeah? No, they oh. color it. It's artificially colored. Oh. It's oh. really white. Oh. Because if you buy gobo like at the grocery store, a, a, an Asian grocery store, you'll see it's a big long root and it's just white and it's kind of to keep it in sawdust usually to keep it moist. The curly dock. Yep. So it has a narrower leaf than the burdock or the the uh, bitter dock. Um, and it gets its name from the, the curled margin. Pretty easy, pretty easy to recognize. Um, this is eaten raw. 
Or cooked. Um, it has a lemony taste. Yeah. 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 Lemony. It's lemony. It's lemony. It's lemony. Um, but I think you want to when you when you find this you want to try to stick maybe the smallest leaves because I think as it, like it, as it gets older it gets a little bit tougher and grittier. Um, but if we see any more of this, or <laughs> Oh, no, I yeah, and we have a nice tip. We have some grits, curly dust stuff, grits. Cool. Like a catnip. That's catnip? Yeah. Yeah. It keeps the narrow. Yeah. It's like the work of the Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. So you can eat this raw. You can um, make some good tea. Kiss it. Enjoy your cat. <laughs> it has a. No wonder cats so wild. Has a clear mint. <laughs> yeah. So this plant here, I just found one, I guess one spot here. Uh, this is pokeweed. And pokeweed has been eaten for just hundreds of years by, uh, especially people in the south, they, um, they used to can it. The, uh, I guess the last companies that canned pokeweed just went out of business recently. But um, you can see the in the in the spring it'll come up in this uh, the stem where the these leaves alternate. So you got one leaf here, one leaf here, one leaf here. So they, uh, as opposed to some plants where you get two leaves or more coming out of the same spot in, in the stem, this is an alternate leaf plant. Um, you can see some red streaks down the stem, and this plant is very poisonous if you prepare it incorrectly. Mm. The uh, the root, <laughs> the root is very very poisonous, and it could kill you if you ate enough of it. Um, if you want to to eat the the leaves and the stem, you want to find plants that are about this size. Um, anything more than about 10 inches, the uh, the toxins start building up too much. Um, even then. If you're if you want to cook this and eat this, you still have to cook it to to cook out the toxins. Um, so one method that people have been using to uh, prepare this safely is they'll uh, get the, uh, get two big pots of boiling water. Um, they'll throw in all their pokeweed into boiling water for one minute, take out the pokeweed, dump out that water, dump out the toxins that leached out there. Mm -hmm. Take another uh, take an, take your other pot of boiling water and add it to the uh, add it to a pot and boil this again for one minute, dump out that water so you get, get rid of those toxins. And then you can cook this for about 10 to 15 minutes, uh, and 15 minutes to be safe, and um, take it out, squeeze out the, the moisture, and it's a, a very nice vegetable. Um, so you just eat the leaves? No, you can eat the... Oh, everything. You can, you can oh, chop it up. That. Okay. Eat the, the stem and the leaves. Okay. You want to make sure you avoid the root when you cut off the stem because no amount of cooking is going to make you safe from the root. Um, and you want to measure it. Anything, anything bigger than 10 inches, you're starting to run into a danger zone where, you know, cooking it might, you know, might still give you problems. Hmm. And they're producing this commercially? Yeah, so in the South, they, they is a very traditional vegetable. And there were two companies uh, that, that canned this, um, but they went out of business in the last few years, so now, there's, now it's sort of... Uh, <laughs> completely non-commercial. Hmm. Does uh, that have uh, berries later in the season? Yeah, so it produces these purple berries. Yeah. Oh, we've got it. Oh, yeah. Yeah, they're called berries.
Got to get him with Chuck. It's the tastiest of all the vegetables I think you can eat all the time. It's about good It's just a wonder, wonderful green vegetable to eat. You can eat it just by itself as a green vegetable, maybe with a touch of butter and salt or something like that. The characteristic thing is three changes of water, as Shannon described. Two quick changes and one at least eight or ten minutes minimum. Oh, no, no, no. Um, so if it doesn't kill you, what kind of sick does it make you? <laughs> really bad sick? Upset, so, upset, upset stomach. Upset stomach. I understand that some, some people can blow up from it. No. Like that, but it is, like you said, toxic to eat the food. Do not eat the food. And don't... Oh, bigger is better. No, it's not. <laughs> Small like that. Just as I'll show you some more of this at lunch, so you can see some yeah. different stages of it. But this is about as tall as you want to, to harvest food. So you want to make sure you, you know, I, I sort of dug around and, and saw where the root was, and I cut it off a bit above the root. And that's, that's about 10 inches there, so that's a, a good size. But make sure that you cook out, cook, the, cook this in three changes of water. The... I'll pass this around, but the, the characteristic shape, you have these leaves with these teeth, or these, uh, these kind of lobes, and a, underneath there's a whitish bloom that you can kind of rub off with your finger. You feel a little grainy bloom underneath. And uh, tastes a little bit like spinach. You said lamb's quarters? Lamb's quarters, yeah. yeah. Is that called boost foot too? It might be. Because I think the leaf kind of has like sort of... But you can see the, the so the characteristic is the, the leaf shape. It's hard. To, it's a bit hard to tell right now. Um, so a month from now, these leaves, be, it, the, the the teeth would be more exaggerated. Um, but you can pass it around and and see the especially the whitish bloom underneath the leaf. When? Do you know that? Anytime. And just eat it like spinach, huh? Yeah, so cooked or raw. Like that, it goes down to nothing. Yeah, these are all imports, right? Good idea. Okay. Nice skill Yeah, that's true. Lamb quarters. Uh, Joe, do you want to nope. explain this? You go ahead. I don't. I haven't eaten this at the, the stage. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So the first thing you want to do is make sure you have milkweed and not dog bane. When it's this young, they look a lot alike. You have to look for fuzz. Fuzz is good. This has fuzz on it, so you know you've got your milkweed. And you want them just these heights. And there's a few of them here. And then this is one that's like the pokeweed that you boil three times to get the milky sap out. The pokeweed doesn't have the milky sap, but you boil both of them three times. And then... You're good to go. And then I like them lightly sautéed um, in a little butter or olive oil. They're a very delicate flavor. A little... Very... Like really very mild vegetable. Uh, pokeweed has more uh, a stronger flavor, but right. they're Milk similar. Very mild. They're similar in shape and a little bit in flavor. So you, milk, can eat the leaves milk, you can eat these little leaves. Milkweed similar to the cattails have different stages. Yes, different it seasons. has easier stages than this. This this has three edible stages. Stages. Number one. That. Six inch shoots. Boil them three times 
put some oil in with them, eat them, put them in a salad, whatever you want. Number two. They get a, they get bigger. You'll you, you all know you some when they get to the flower stage before the the flowers open. The flowers are those pink smelly things. When they're little green buds in clumps, they clusters look like buds. they almost look like broccoli. Take all those clusters. They are so delicious. Boil them three times, and then they I put them in stir fries. That you can pull them apart or just leave them in clumps. Put cheese on them. Put oil on them and just eat them like a vegetable. I often just boil them and eat them right like that without even salt. But most most people like a little salt on them. Then the third the the third and final stage is after the seed pods form when they're still smaller than your thumb. The biggest seed pod you want to you want to have is about this size. And you got a seed pod like this. It's too tough already. Go on. So you get the little seed pods, and again, boil them three times, and I like to make pod thai with those. <laughs> I boil them three times, and I put them in the rest of my pod thai uh, recipe, and we they're really good. They, they have a wonderful consistency. They're very unusual. Um, you don't have to put them in pod thai. You can put them in any dish, or you can just cook it's them with... It's a green vegetable. It's a green vegetable. Use it like you would any green vegetable. We've also made... Um, Stir fries with them. We've also made a nice casserole quiche kind of thing with the flower buds. Um, wow. And you can also... Steve Brill uses the flowers a little farther along and makes like pancakes and things with them in them. Wow. Yep. Anything you can imagine, as long as you boil them three times. Some, some identification, uh, no, identification milk factors milk. you can see is that when you cut this, <coughs> you get this milky same, latex coming out of the stem. Sorry, what is that? The milkweed. Oh, yes, milkweed. So when you cut it, you, you see this milk oozing out of the, the stem. So would dog bane not have Yeah, milk there's some more. I don't think dog, dog bane has the, has the uh, white staff, no. Um, it, it could. Yeah. yeah. And it's, it's good, yeah. It's look for your fuzz. You see the leaves the dog, here? Dog bane is there. The leaves are all are opposite to each other. So we get pairs of leaves that are opposite to each other. The the leaves have a kind of a, a fuzz underneath. And I, I I guess the, the milkiness of the, the sap is a good way to recognize it. Um, but it, as Kathy was saying, you can use this in different stages. Um, but just from, from what Kathy said, you probably have a hard time identifying it uh, if you found it three months from now. But if you find it right now, in this stage, and you recognize the stage, then you can follow it as it grows and and uh, keep track of it. What's the effect of dog bane? <laughs> very bad. It's very toxic. Not good. People bane. Bane. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Bane. Yeah. 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 So the milk. Of that I think it causes digestive, severe digestive problems. Yeah. Oh, no. But I'm just saying.